matches pop on over there. We have the first band coming out from Disrupt. It will be a Blackbeard. So you mentioned before, these are more traditional bands, something we have seen a lot. And Blast Map on Villa specifically, Glass, uh, Blackbeard, Let Loose, and Free to Play, and it caused a heck of a lot of havoc, and they made such an impact on the game. No surprise to see Blackbeard gone. Nomad and Echo. Also not surprising, but it's honestly, it's it's interesting to see the impact Nomad is already having. Granted, on a map like Border... Disconnected. User disconnected from your channel. Connected. Channel switched. I think it's uh, pretty predictable that we would have um, four standard bands coming up from these two teams, right? User joined your Elevate channel. And you think about Disrupt, these are two very seasoned teams. These are teams who are going to have a lot of strategies prepared over the past, you know, year or whatever that they've been playing together. Um, so this is a group of guys who they're going to know what they want banned out. They're not going to probably do some you know, risky stuff. Um, the fact that this is also likely to be a very close matchup, no team is necessarily favored over the other. Um, makes it a little bit less likely that a team might go for a bit of a cheese strategy, if you'll, you know, let me use the term. No team really wants to just, uh, I will not. Some, some I will not. Okay, I will not. from Disrupt, but I got to imagine Disrupt right off the bat are an inherent advantage just simply because Havana is not being taken by Elevate. Yeah, certainly. Um, the Thermite being out, we still have some hard destruction options, but uh, yeah, no Havana being brought is going to be a factor that we got to consider. 30 seconds into this round, though, and we haven't seen a ton go down. The attackers are just sort of getting towards uh towards the site i believe we did see a run out i believe that was from modiga um at the very start of this matchup it didn't result in anything you didn't see anybody Modega. Didn't get shot modega oh my back modega, modega. <laughs> modega. <laughs> well whatever it looks like he's gonna do it again not uh, not working up from that time either but uh you know it's good to see the aggressive plays they want to start this match off right Typically, you see Havana being picked for that long angle from office windows, but we'll have to see how well this attack can be orchestrated. We are a minute and 30 seconds into the round. Everybody's still standing in a mode digger. One of the better fraggers we have in Challenger League still on the loose. Again, no Nomad to completely shut off his roam. Yeti also joining his friend in the roam game. Things will pop up, and it'll just be a game of chess at the moment. Yeah, I think Yeti going to be the player that most people recognize in this server. Obviously, uh, the captain of X Noble, the team that played in Challenger League uh, for the past few seasons, really uh, was shocking when they broke up as Orgless, and now he has moved down to Challenger League. His teammates have all gone elsewhere, and he's going to open up this match. Wow. A C4 he... kills the Thermite whilst he was trying to explode that wall. That was so brilliantly played. Another one immediately answered out by Nog, though. He will uh, take down Spades and put us into a four on four. But that is such a big kill, man. That first one that Yeti got onto the thing. And he also destroyed the exothermic target. Yes. That was, that was a twofer for Yeti. <laughs> what a wonderfully placed C4. And... And we're already seeing dividends of the roam game and the lack of clearing really starting to bite down for the members of Elevate. But the plant going down will be answered immediately by Toxic Canisters from Waffle. But the plant is going to be completed. Yeah. You are in a 3v3 with the plant down. Things are not looking so hot, but Waffle, everyone's favorite breakfast, is determined to clutch it. And they can just sit on this right now as all members huddle up for warmth and nobody in position for Elevate to stop it. 
Disrupt Gaming will take the first round 1-0 on the coattails of Yeti and Waffle. Everyone's, Everyone's favorite breakfast? breakfast? Overrated. Everyone's Excuse favorite me? breakfast. Waffles. Waffles. Excuse me? Are you serious? Hello? Corn pops all the way, man. There's a reason why I've got this nickname, okay? It's the best cereal in the world. Snack. You need a snap, crackle, pop your way out of this conversation right now. <sighs> I that can't believe pops, you bring right? that up. I don't even eat corn pops. No, that's not. That's that's, that's Rice Krispies, man. What that's Rice Krispies? Yeah, Snap, Crackle, Pot. Pops, that's, right? that's their three little gnomes right, whatever, or whatever continue. they have. What is, the, what is Corn Pops thing? What? It's a cereal. Like, like that's right. Excuse snap, me? Snap, Crackle, Pot. What is oh. the pet point? They don't really have... Okay, the Corn Pop branding is, honest to God, not that good. They don't have a mascot, and they don't really have... have... Alright, I'm done with you. That was a really <laughs> well around from Disrupt Gaming because, I mean, we only saw three kills from each team. That ended in the... Oh, I'm sorry. We only saw five kills in total the entire round. That was yeah. very... Well, that was just simply well played. Really, that's all you can say. That didn't require everyone dying. That just required smart positioning, callouts, and uh, of course, a Waffle won a heck of a clutch to make that a lot easier. And we saw the negative effects to an office push with the Thermite because so late into the round, we saw him place that exothermic charge and it also cost him his life. Could you imagine if instead they had a Habana to open up that long angle from the very beginning instead would have certainly benefited them more than Thermite having to walk up to the wall and I'm, I'm so. I'm, I don't say I'm glad it happened, but it's relieving as a caster or an analyst <laughs> to see exactly what you're talking about basically happen. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, uh, that's the experience you want being brought on when you bring a player like Yeti onto your roster. When I was first looking at these teams, one of the questions I had for this matchup was is Yeti really going to have time to gel? Because he wasn't like that uh, established on this roster yet. He kind of joined it um, in the last couple of weeks or so so i was a little bit worried if he'd been able to adjust the team so far obviously we've only seen one round of his performance and he's going to be the first kill in this round so uh, i don't know that we can draw any solid conclusions but a good first round from him a good first opening kill to start this game off and lead his team into a 1-0 victory in the first round we'll see now however they uh deal without him as he has fallen and it's going to be a four on five with a minute 30 left to go that's going to be hey taken off the board i don't know if he threw out all of his claws yet Thunder gets another one as Modega will fall, and uh, these players, these defenders, just dropping like flies after they have to rotate off of the best bomb site on the map. Your two primary roamers are already off the board, and again, this is simply well played. That's all we've seen is just good wow. positioning, good use of adjustment from Elevate this entire round. They're using angles that Disrupt Gaming have opened up for themselves and are just taking complete advantage. This is a slaughter from wow. the, all of Elevate, specifically Pixel opening up things for his team and uh, it's just a 3K throughout the rounds. An interesting move from Nog, but oh, uh, this is such a pleasure to cast right now, this entire game, because this has been, this hasn't been a frag fest or maybe players just uh, going for the kills and no time left. This is just simply positioning adjustments and good execution of those adjustments. It's been very impressive so far. And I want to point out, I earlier in the past two games, I was informed that the reveal phase didn't exist. In fact, it does. Oh. We just don't have six oh, yeah. picks. So I look foolish. Uh, reveal phase does exist, just no six picks, so what you see is what you get from these teams, which is still, you know, I'm glad I mentioned no six picks, because it's still very influential, and that is not a permanent thing, it is simply a technical error, so if you are a viewer and you're coming in for the first time right now, six pick not being a thing is not permanent. What is permanent is the Hibana pick, and I am so glad we're seeing the Prodigy, because... This is exactly what I mentioned. If you want flexibility in your attacks, you bring Habana. There's not big, what, what does he say? The big heck and hole. I'll censor myself coming right up. Uh, yeah, you don't need those big heck and holes for like, in multiple sites and multiple positions. Yeah. So I, I do very much enjoy that Habana adjustment. I think the only the only reason you bring Thermite for the very first round is because you know you're going to be attacking almost for sure on army walkers. And uh, he's 
definitely better than Habana on that bomb site, just because there's so many large walls you can open up. Maybe you could go two of them, but probably not. The Habana gonna be a much more common operator to see, um, because you need hatches and stuff on this on this bomb site. So, you know, I think it makes sense that they have uh, swapped over now. However, when uh, round four runs around, we'll see if they go back to thermite. I kind of expect them to uh, to do that. But that's neither here nor there. We're a minute into this round, then again, it's been very slow. We've seen this all three rounds so far, where there's not usually like an early frag fast. If you look at the match we just saw before, Coon Squad versus Sills Gorillas, two teams that maybe people are putting a little bit lower on their on their power rankings or on their predictions for this season compared to these two guys right here, Disrupt and Elevate. Um, you see the difference in play style, right? The newer teams, the sort of less established teams, play things pretty aggressively. Things get uh, heated very quickly. Now when you have these two very veterans of Challenger League playing up against one another, um, they take their time, they're going to do things exactly at the pace they want to. Speaking of which, Pixel gets a nice shot onto Reed and going to be, um, well, taking out the rookie of Disrupt. Probably the, uh, the newest member of this, uh, in the server, really. The, new, the least seasoned player. He's going to get taken down, was uh, picked up over the offseason by Disrupt. And, well, now they're in a 4 on 5. But again, you don't see a lot happening after that. Finally, with almost a minute left to go, Thunder will get the headshot onto Yeti. Further tilting it in favor of Elevate. With the plant going down, an answer from Waffle, but the plant is successful. So a 4v3 for the members of Disrupt Gaming. They'll have a lot to work with. Thunder continuing his excellent play. Will fall low Digga. Rich will pick up one for himself onto Spades. A meeting of fates will not. Wow. Well, nothing will happen with the Habana, but not will finish things off. Pixel and Thunder are putting Elevate completely no, no actually i'm gonna correct myself elevate are playing very well pixel and thunder are using the information provided by their teams to heights that I, I i love seeing and not reinforcing off stock has really you saw the kill the thunder had <coughs> the second kill picked up in the rounds that was just from a lack of reinforcements and he took advantage these two teams have gone back and forth with in-game adjustments almost masterfully and it is a pleasure to watch both of these teams do just that we will see armor yet again where this up gaming were very successful and again very much on the coattail of the rome game from yeti and well waffle was an anchor but yeti specifically that c4 connected with that thermite but again we have yet to see a profit i said prodigy before we have yet to see profit uh, back on the thermite after that for mishap so the habana adjustments obviously called well thought out we'll have to see how it pays dividends i got to imagine we're going to keep committing to an office push yeah disruptor obviously need another shot here in armor lockers but they look very strong you know try to cool move the first round of the of the match so maybe it's a little bit shaky from elevate i guess this round will kind of answer that question of whether it was just a fluke or not but uh, that was the bomb site where they were looking very, very good. And of course, um, this is the bomb site where most teams look good on defense when you're playing on Porter, right? Armory Locker is very, very popular to defend. Pretty much every single team is going to defend this every chance they get. Um, but after this, I kind of would like to see Disrupt go somewhere else. Their ventilation workshop holds have just not like been looking strong, at least against this Elevate squad. They have dismantled it twice in a row quite decisively. Now, the other bomb sites on this map aren't the greatest, but I'd like to see them try something different. Um, at least try it now before it's too late. You've already sunk three or four rounds of that one bomb site into the hole, should you continue to uh, to lose on it. The Surf Gaming have a very firm hold on Armory Wall at the moment, and well, they are very clearly not prepared to give it up. The uh, Mira inside of Small Office, typically seen with a castle instead, so sort of adjustment here as we see the mirror placed inside a small office of son's castle slow goings right now for elevators they look to make an adjustment and clearly they're going looking for a push into armory which is interesting enough for me uh, the bandit trick does not work from a yeti the x girls will okay? connect thunder is down at the moment it looks like he'll get picked up sure enough but only to 20 health again newest patch 20 health on down but not out so Disrupt Gaming are currently sitting pretty with all of their operators at full health, and it'll be, well, again, as time ticks down, you only favor the defense in these scenarios, especially when you have a smoke, especially when you have a smoke as good as Waffle. We did hear that Mira being popped on open inside of Small, so that at least will force Waffle off for the time being. The EMPs come out from Nog. Where is Elevate going to go? 
There we go. We finally have members devoting themselves to this armory push. But again, time ticking down. I was about to say a 5v5, but no, it's a 5v4. It's a 5v3. Nog, the in-game hero for Elevate, picks up a double to set himself up for success. Yeti and Modiga could not refrag from one another or make it work in any case. This cool. A very well-placed grenade will not, unfortunately, connect. Grenade will be taken up by a C4. Space picks up one. Thunder will take him out. Reed grabs one in the background on a refrag. It's a 3v2, but again, you have the smoke still up, as well as a C4. So, no, actually, no more gas canisters for him. The last one, we hear that smoke come out. Oh, unfortunate position for Reed as he peeks around. Pixel peeks right through the mirror and takes out Waffle. Unfortunate. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Pixel comes from Metal. That was still Thunder position through <laughs> that Mira. And you know, that was, again, well played by Elevate. Disrupt Gaming look a little bit lost since that first round. What's happening, Man Pants? Elevate, three rounds in a row now, have just looked like they're toying with their food almost. I mean, yeah, that round's a little bit better from Disrupt, but it should have been a win. I mean, they're on Armory Lockers. That's the one that, in all cases, should be going towards the defenders. Um, but towards the start of it, I mean, losing two of your roamers immediately is just not a good way to start off your round. From there, they started trading things back and forth, but uh, what's happening, really? I, you don't expect this rock I, I, to be falling apart like this. I have uh, a not-so-surprising uh, little hidden idea as to what might be going wrong. Yeti okay. and Modega. The first round, a lot of success from Yeti, especially with the ball play C4. Rome game presence, known. You have a 5v4 break. The past two rounds, or at least two of the past three rounds, we've seen Yeti and Modiga fall first for their team, and it's just, uh, and they're forcing it to be on the coattails of Reed, Spades, and Waffle. And that is simply not good enough for your roamers. So you need your roamers to be more effective. You can't get, your roamers can't get double kills. You know, there has to be a refrag there somewhere. And we do see a spawn beat from Yeti results in him losing half of his health. I imagine we're going to see some adjustment if it doesn't work out right now for the Romans. Speaking of adjustment, a different type of setup right here for Disrupt Gaming. The last time we saw something, uh, a pocket threat, if you will, from Disrupt Gaming, we saw Elevate adjust to it beautifully. However, this seems to be an adjustment of an adjustment, and so not giving up CCTV. A lot of presence to CCTV with Reed and his and Miro's being placed inside there, but an office push will be the call, and that could be in favor of EG as they have those long angles picked out. However, long angles picked out without ACOG, so this is, no, well, this could definitely go either way, and I'm very excited to see the fruits of it. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about these holes being open in the fountain. It does sort of expose your backside if you're playing the angle that Yeti's playing, if you're looking into the offices. You know, you might uh, you worry about somebody coming up from your flank. Currently, there's nobody who's uh, pressuring that angle, so it's not like the end of the world. Um, but Yeti constantly has to be worried about that. They do have the mirror window, though. Of course, that's um, playing in the break room. That could be countered maybe by somebody pushing in there from the outside. Um, so you'd want to be worried about that. That's probably why you don't see a strategy like this too often. But again, it could catch off um, Elevate. It could catch them off their guard. And uh, so should they choose to be pushing from that direction, it might be something to worry about. But they're kind of not. They're sort of all focused towards the offices, not really caring with that pocket strategy, saying, yeah, I don't know if it's good, I don't know if it's bad. I'm just going to come over here and uh, destroy it for you not even worry about it too much. We did see the Bandit Trick go off to destroy one set of X Kairos. It's a very good play coming out from Yeti to be able to stop that. But other than that, there hasn't been a lot going on this round. And again, this is sort of what we've been seeing time and time again. They take their time, Elevate do, but when they come down to it, right, when things get to get serious, they're able to pull it out three rounds in a row now. They have executed on this push brilliantly. Coming in the last minute of the round, this is where you'd expect to see them start to get going. Right, and this pocket strat at the moment for DG has paid nothing but dividends. We are 45 seconds left in a 5v5 with Pixel so very low. And it just, oh, but Nog is, again, opening things up for his team. Nog is playing and doing any kind of heroics he can for the rest of the team. We do see that plant going down right next to AC. The Toxic Canister will prove effective, and there you go. Prophet will go down as well as the Diffuser, but in the background, we are having too many members of DG fall. It is a bloodbath 
But at the moment, these teams are just going to be holding angles again. That diffuser is down, and there are only 15 seconds left. Reed picks up one. He looks the wrong way, though. The pressure is still from his left, and he will fall to thunder. Reed picks up not in the background. 1v1, no! Reed caught with his pants down, and thunder will bring it down onto him. Unfortunate positioning for Reed. Well played by Elevate. That was a very chaotic round. I mean, Reed can only carry the team for so long, right? He got so many kills in that round. I think it was a 3k um, by him. And again, that round started to go downhill as soon as the roamers from Disrupt started to get aggressive. You're holding on Armory Lockers. You don't need roamers to be playing that aggressively, right? Um, you play on Armory Lockers Archives. You can kind of have five people sitting back on the site waiting for the push to come into you. But consistently, Disrupt are throwing Yeti at the enemy team. They're throwing Modiga at the enemy team. And consistently, they're getting nothing, right? As you mentioned, the first round, sure, they were effective. Yeti, in particular, opened things up, and uh, they won the round because of it. But they have continued to try that, and it has continued to not work for them. That's the reason why they're down 4-1 right now. Again, every time they've gone in armory lockers, it's been a little bit, you know, it's been very close. Um, but ultimately, both of these last two rounds have come down to uh, your roamers throwing their lives away early on in the round, and then just not uh, not having the clutch factor that uh, is being forced upon the anchors once the roamers die and get nothing. Absolutely. It is very, very rare to see Modiga not be effective in a sure, game, yeah. and you gotta give credit to Elevate. I mean, they uh, at first it was Pixel and Thunder doing everything. Nog has just stepped up. Nog has been the opening kills for his team the past three rounds. He's just started things off well for his team, and we're seeing GG, I don't want to say panic, but they're trying to bring out strat after strat to adjust to what they're seeing, and it's just not really working. So, you'll certainly need adjustments, as you mentioned, from your roamers, but specifically Modiga, because, like you said, he's just got to perform better. We're seeing a rather aggressive office hold this time. That's an adjustment to the consistent office pushes from Elevate, but it, it's not really look like Elevate are that concerned as Thunder picks up the kill onto Reed. So Mira gone, and it'll be all up to Modiga to fight his way out of CCTV. So an adjustment from what they saw before. Really good use of Econs also. This has been a game of positioning a lot for Elevate as they picked up so, so many kills. And yeah, sure enough, Thunder will pick up the kill into Modiga. And you're looking back at your Smoke and Maestro again to clutch this out. And Elevate is showing why they picked Mortar here, but they're also really making a statement. Yeah, again, the Roamers go down. Thunder! First your team to clutch. <laughs> Thunder, Even has, Thunder is on a roll this entire game Man. as well as so many members of Elevate are carrying their weight in gold right now. They are each contributing to the success of these rounds. It's been nothing short of impressive and obviously Elevate, Nog, Thunder all performing very, very well. But gotta give credit where credit's due. IGL Nog has way overperformed for his role. We are so used to IGLs simply well, going back and playing just a support role rather than he's virtually played entry fragger for his team for a, a majority of these. And mid game, Nog has shined. I mean, we saw it before when Elevate was playing. Nog mid game is a whole nother beast. Once that, once it hits. A, a minute to two minutes. Nog will pick up a kill. It is, it is determined. That is the God's demand. That is, <laughs> it, it's, it's pretty much always happened. He is absolutely insane in the mid game. And he drones his team in, he calls the shots and he can execute his own strategies very, very well. And you see Prophet with zero kills there, but his success in a lot of uh, what we're seeing right now is his drone work, as uh, I have been told, is the best of the best. God tier drone. God tier drone. And they absolutely love him for it. So, and despite the zero kills and something I love so much about Siege, it's it's that doesn't tell the story. He could be the MVP right now for Elevate. And we wouldn't know from the scoreboard. It would just be in-game comms and obviously the talk uh, afterward if they were to come um, out with the win here.
certainly there's a lot that goes uh, into being a team leader that is not often reflected in the stats, and uh, I think it's important that a team's able to recognize that. Even if maybe necessarily the viewers don't see it, um, it is a very vital part of the team's success, is uh, how they're led. Right now, Elevator looking like they're led very, very well. <laughs> they're playing really great. Um, I'm looking at the scoreline, and they're up 5-1 going into defense on order. Like, this is another map where usually you'll see the defenders do well. Maybe not on all the bomb sites, right? You look at the off sites, even Ventilation Workshop, um, they can be kind of tilted in favor of the attackers. But the fact that you get to defend at least twice on Armory Lockers is a huge boon for you. The fact that Disrupt lost Armory Lockers three times, like, statistically, looking at uh, averages and, you know, what bomb sites they, uh, they should have been winning, they shouldn't win this map. They're gonna have to pull out something pretty incredible to be able to come back on attack. We'll see if they can do it. I mean, uh, clearly, we've seen that it's very possible to attack successfully in Armory Lockers. Maybe it has to do a bit with the bands, maybe with the team's play styles. Um, but Disrupt Gaming are going to need to uh, emulate the success that was found from Elevate in attacking on this bomb site. And slow goings, really, for DG As at always. the moment. And this is a very similar defensive strategy that they themselves have used. And it's a little surprising that they are taking this long to formulate a game plan they're comfortable with. Obviously, they have so many people devoted to this armory push. If we're going to see this armory push happen and soon, uh, we do see Profit ready for a flank at any given moment, but yeah, like I said, th this push is going to happen soon, and this is going to be one heck of a fight as it goes out. Yeti will open things up for his team with the kill on Denai. Yeti will play shots, will also take out Rich, a 5v3 in favor of Disrupt Gaming as he looks to finally grab a round back after that first round. Well played shots though from Profit and Thunder. Will even things up for their team as the score will miss. But Spades just walks right on in and will pick himself up a couple wow. kills as Yeti picks up his third. Though really good use of their time for Disrupt. I mean, I mentioned it midway. They're taking a lot of time to come up and formulate this plan, but obviously it paid off in spades. They executed <laughs> flawlessly. They followed Yeti's opening kill. It's obviously very well played by Yeti. And they finally got a round back. Now, if you're, if you are disrupt gaming right now, you are, you can finally exhale, right? You got that first round, you're feeling great, and all of a sudden you get rolled over five rounds in a row. You have to stop the bleeding somehow, and, and it must feel so relieving when you finally take up that win. And Armory has not looked good for a lot of these teams. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, this is a bomb site. They used to set high defensive win rate. And uh, what is that? Four rounds in a row, the attackers have taken it. Uh, pretty nuts. I'm not super sold on Yeti's roam play in this matchup at the very least, but clearly I he is a about good that Glass player. Yeah, no, that's not yes. going to be an issue. And especially now that he's picked up the Glass, uh, that was a very good performance on Glass. A 3k for him after the half swap. And, you know, that's something that can be really important is the half swap for teams. If you go down five rounds in a row, right, that half swap is really important to be able to change the momentum because you're playing different operators, you're doing different stuff. You're on the other side of the field now. You can really reset yourself um, in terms of mentally, but also you, you, just the rest of it um, in terms of what you're doing, right? Now you're able to change things up and uh, hopefully stop the momentum that the other team has been building upon you. And it looks like they've done a great job of that. Disrupt gaming finding a round on the board that's their second one so far in this game they're gonna have another opportunity one thing i noticed last time in their attack is they played it very similar to the way the elevator were playing their attacks they're not rushing things they're not doing anything stupid they're not playing aggressively they're just taking the time they're waiting to execute and when they execute they're making sure they get it right now that can be a little risky strategy because if you don't get it right well then you've wasted a whole bunch of time and now you're in a clutch situation it gets really messy from that point on um, but so far, both these teams, um, I think as expected, have proven that uh, they can close it out when given the proper setup and not pushed too hard. So, we'll see. I mean, with these two teams having such experience, you would expect them to be able to pull it out in those last second pushes when they need to. But with a minute 45 still to go, zero kills on the board. This is sort of what I was talking about. They're going to take their time right. and eventually get And a uh, very interesting... Oh, I wouldn't say it'd be interesting. Whoa, Ooh. here we go. Things <laughs> just kick off. Rich Peaks 
and Spate puts him down. A place grenade. And a one heck of a risky peek from him. That, keep in mind, that is your buck off the board now. So Spade picked up a double kill last round, but he also held down all of ventilation and workshop by himself. So this opens up the idea or play for a C4 potentially from underneath from Profit or simply just, it, yeah, we're seeing it right now. Mo Digga is now below watching any potential flanks. But th that opens up the door. That was a very interesting operator to pick off first you gotta imagine maestro cams are all faced the way he wants to i believe one was already destroyed actually from modega we do see both those impact views low goings again modega literally doing exactly what space did the last time with the push up metal yeti continuing his dominance on glass picks up one for himself 35 seconds left we've seen dg perform very well when push comes to shove oh yeti ahead uh... of his smoke will be down by thunder pixel picks up one and waffle will refrag so a 2v2 but with the plant going down it's basically a 2v1 pixel picks up one will read refrag okay. however so we are in a 1v1 scenario with plenty of time left and read wow. will take out profit disrupt will win the eighth round five three for disrupt now as they look to climb out of this hole really well positioned by Reed. Poor information being fed to Prophet, however. You could tell he thought he was on the armory side, but no, Reed pushed from backside offices. What a play from the Jackal. Reed is one of those players that Disrupt picked up over the offseason, and he was a real unknown quantity. Um, I know when they announced their roster Disrupted on Twitter, or I went on the Reddit thread, and one of the comments was, who is Reed? I've never heard of this guy before. And a couple of people chimed in um, they mentioned that he's a really good sort of lower tier support player, somebody who's playing on those lower level teams for a while now. And so I am, I've been very impressed. Yeah, on Team Xeno, um, this is probably the biggest team that he's been on. So uh, seeing him come out for Disrupt really prove what he's worth has been I think, a great thing for me to see. One of my questions coming into, uh, into this play day for Disrupt was, okay, is Reed going to be just, you know, a weird poor decision? Or have you really found this diamond in the rough? And clearly, it is the uh, the latter of those two options. I think it's great from Disrupt to be able to recognize talent from all spheres of play, from all levels, and uh, pick them up, bring them into their lineup. Of course, you can contrast that with Yeti, who is uh, the complete opposite of the spectrum. Everybody knows how good Yeti is, and uh, he has been proving it on the glass. He's going to try proving it on a different operator who maybe fills a, I don't want to say a similar role, but a, a similar place in people's minds where they don't necessarily love playing against this operator the ying being brought out of course it's one of those operators that used to get banned quite a bit it's one of those operators that as uh i mentioned earlier with nomad being banned is something that's going to be on the board more often right because nomads in the game people are trying to ban her rather than these other annoying operators such as glass such as ying that yeti has just been abusing to their maximum potential um, I'm interested to see if he can be as effective on the Ying as he was on the Glass, because that second round, although he didn't go uh, go off as much as he did in the in the first round since the half swap, he still did well. I believe he got one kill and then died. So, and his team won the round. So, I don't necessarily agree with the fact that he's swapping off over to the Ying. But of course, all he's got to do is land a few candelas, run in, and get a 4K to prove me wrong. Should that actually happen, maybe four gets a bit too high of standards. All he's got to do is get a couple of kills. He performs well this round, then uh, then I'll stop stop questioning his operator decisions. But I don't know. Right now, certainly has the opportunity to prove me wrong. As usual, these rounds are going to start off very very slow. Almost a minute 30 gone, and we still see everybody still alive. And both these teams have shown to be very competent on attack. We're back to armory lockers. Um, and it's a bit weird because this is the six armory lockers we've seen in a row and we have seen five wins for the attackers so you know if you're new to siege maybe this seems like well, why do they keep going to the back of this bomb site it should be so bad but it, it's not really i mean this is a bomb site where generally teams do really well on right uh, it's supposed to be one of the most defensive sided uh, bomb sites in the game but clearly the attackers are just having their way with things so with uh, a minute left well, to go, we'll start to see that, things bro. take off oh no. You just got the you just got the caster curse. The defenders are having their way so. with things and well two of them are picked off as the Rome game has now seen some sort of success there. Very much corn pop for I had to quickly run. He wasn't being selfish, not at all. Nog! A mid-game toxic baby okay. get a kill. You don't see it very often, but obviously so well played by Nog. And it would seem 
Elevate are quite sick of dropping rounds and are determined to take this one back. And it will be Nog to place the smoke right on top of that reinforced wall, and that will damage past it. Pixel, or Rich, rather. Pixel wow. the rest. So that placement of the Toxic Faith does damage through the reinforced wall for those who don't know. So you can just place it at the feet of that, and they can't plant there. If they push through, they take a lot of damage, et cetera, et cetera. As Elevate move to match point, and of course, you just had the uh, you know, Caster Curse right there. Well, that's the way it goes. <laughs> um, that's, yeah. that's how it goes. Oh, well. It's happened to me point. like eight, eight times so far oh, today. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, just as soon as I say something, oh, really con well controlled aggression. <laughs> They're overly aggressive and they just die. Uh, it's just. I also, yeah. real quick, the camera always spawns over the Trump wall right there. Yeah. Always. And I never figured out why. I've spectated and observed so many games for border and it has always spawned there and i can i i just never figured out why i don't know why that's the spawn point of that yeah i don't really know either um i think if you look back to that last round and take a look at yeti you're really questioning why he swapped off the class i mean it was working really well for him the the first round that he played it he always got a 3k the second round he did all right he got a kill his team won the round and uh you know i'm not he didn't die early on the on the glass or on the ying or anything but he just let his three of his teammates die and then he ran in Pop the Candelas didn't get anything, uh, died himself eventually. So especially if he pops off now on the glass, I think uh, DG are going to be really User joined maybe kicking channel. themselves. User sort of left upset that they had, uh, User well, User ask left Yeti channel. to swap off of that operator. Because I thought he was doing really well. I thought uh, this was going to be the thing that maybe brought it back for them. But clearly at this point, the W is out of question. They're just going to try to win three rounds in a row. And it will force us to a 6-6 six, six tie. Obviously, if you're a DG, you have to stay calm, but it is so difficult, and you can definitely get in your own head. If you manage to fall 0-2, it can really... That's, that's a, obviously, it's a tough start when you lose your first two games, but it can also weigh on you mentally. And Siege, and esports in general, as much as anything, is a lot of mental fortitude you need in order to succeed. You see teams ride the hot hand. You see teams all of a sudden pick up one win and then start to feel good about themselves and string a couple together and a lot of that is momentum and the attitude they have going into it but if you're a team and you go oh it's to start things off it's, it's gotta stick yeah certainly i think disrupt can take a look at this first week and say wow we have had fairly recent roster swaps and we did play two of the best teams in the league so hopefully they can overcome that, especially with the experience that they have on their roster. I, I hope that wouldn't affect them too much, but yes, you are right. It can um, be demoralizing, and especially if the team does anything rash off that, they start making roster moves after the first week. I would not want to see that, but sometimes, especially in North America, you see teams get a little bit trigger happy with changing around their roster. So we'll see how Disrupt reacts to that. But of course, this isn't a loss just yet. They've still got uh, three rounds to pull it back. And for the first two, it might be a little bit nice because they don't have to attack on armory lockers, which generally is pretty good for defenders. However, <laughs> maybe they want to attack on armory lockers with how this well, is gone. Well, DG have already established the control they need, which is just this armory half right here, and then the plant would come through vents. So you just need this coverage from up above. You can send other members elsewhere to cover said angles. But yeah, this specifically is very well set up for disrupt to execute. However. C4s and Toxic Babes are going to play a huge part. If Thunder can position them as well as he has been, well, this is not going to look so, so hot for DG. And here we go. The call is made, and Yeti will walk right on through through his smokes. And we talked about it. The Toxic Babe placement, brilliant from Thunder as well as the C4 from Nog. The Diffuser is going down. Modiga picks up one. The Diffuser is stopped. However, Pixel picks up one, Rich picks up another, and this is just a frag fest right now for the members of Elevate. Elevate in-game adjustments have been second to none, and Pixel Thunder Nog. Fragging out like absolute crazy, and it's not that Rich and uh, Prophet aren't doing anything. The support, the callouts, the positioning, the use of utility, so wonderfully played from Elevate. Yeah, I think Elevate proved that not only